There exists a myriad of mysteries to solve and thousands of phenomena to seek. Our tiny blue planet contains countless wonders and horrors alike, as does the space which surrounds us. As we try to locate our role in this world, we seek to uncover the secrets of this planet, our home. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three amazing discoveries. Scientists discover Mountain is really a cosmic observatory. Ecologist and conservationist Ezekiel Esgura found something amazing in Mount Tlaloc's ruins. While researching ancient Mexican farming and agriculture, he came across a supposed observatory that aligns with the rising sun on one day of the year. More concretely, Esgura uncovered that the ancient civilization which resided within the basin of Mexico used the mountain to track the passing seasons to make it known when to harvest or sow seeds during the year. The National Academies of Sciences published his findings. Before the Spanish seized control of Mexico during the era of Spanish colonization, the citizens of the Basin of Mexico thrived when it came to farming. The community's farmers knew that the monsoon season began in summer, yet would have surely been tempted to sow seeds too early, since early rainfall is common and deceptive, leading farmers to think monsoon season came early only for plants to quickly perish right after sowing. Our records state that this didn't happen. Therefore, there must have been some kind of tracker in place to follow the flow of the seasons to accurately decide when seeds should be planted. Escura points out in his research that the populace lacked tools for observational means, such as European compasses, meaning they must have used different methods to keep track of time. In Escura's words, my initial motivation was to find out how this all started and how these guys came up with these highly productive agricultural systems so early in human history. This was how he ended up in the Mexican mountains. Civilizations all across the globe formed calendars of their own, yet the specifics of this particular location enthralled Escura. He believed that the people used a horizon calendar, which measured time with the position of the setting or rising of sun. As such, the small team of researchers began searching for landmarks in the surrounding area and attempted to find any depiction or mention of them in artifacts or ancient codes. Escura and his researchers used astronomical models which helped them uncover that the rising sun falls perfectly on one of the ruins of Mount Tlaloc on the 23rd or 24th of February every year. In his own words, if an observer is standing in the lower part of this stone causeway, looking upwards on the 23rd or 24th of February, this observer will see the sun rising exactly in the middle of the shaft. The date holds significant power in the Aztec world, as it was believed to have been the day of the Aztec New Year. Despite having only puzzle pieces and not yet the entire puzzle, Escura has called upon other researchers, scientists and other archaeologists to partake in the investigations into the secrets of Mount Tlaloc. Escura has called for the site to be legally protected and preserved. 168 Mysterious Nazca Geoglyphs in the Desert Sands of Peru A recent discovery revealed 168 geoglyphs in the sands of the Nazca Desert, Peru, in an area known as the Nazca Lines. The geoglyphs were interpreted by researchers at the Yamagata University of Japan and showcased several snakes, felines, birds, killer whales, humans, and camelids. The geoglyphs are pictographic. One of the human geoglyphs resembles a cartoon-like drawing of a person with large unrealistic eyes and what archaeologists think is supposed to be a beard or stubble on the face. So far, archaeologists believe these geoglyphs are dated somewhere between 100 BC and 300 AD, but there is still some uncertainty to be had since some researchers believe the Nazca lines can be dated back all the way to 400 BC. Yamagata University published the photographs they took of the geoglyphs, some edited to highlight the original lines, which otherwise are difficult to see due to centuries of the glyphs gradually deteriorating. The IBM Thomas J. Watson Research Center of New York worked in tandem with Yamagata University. The two organizations utilized artificial intelligence to scan the site of the geoglyphs in hopes that the AI would recognize the markings better and more clearly. 
things that researchers worried they might have overlooked or missed. Yamagata University publicly stated, by using the newly discovered geoglyphs for AI analysis, Yamagata University aims to clarify the distribution patterns of the geoglyphs. The results of this research will also be used for geoglyph conservation activities. The Yamagata research took place in the period between June 2019 and February 2020. These 168 geoglyphs are far from the only ones located in the area of the Nazca Lines. The entire site is full of glyphs of all kinds. Every one of these geoglyphs follows a pictorial pattern and was created on the Peruvian desert floor. The towns of Nazca and Palpa are included in landmarks and are considered to be one of UNESCO's World Heritage Sites. The Nazca Lines span 400 kilometers. In the past, archaeologists discovered that at the end of the Nazca Lines were wooden snakes dug into the ground. These snakes proved to researchers that the people living in the basin used basic tools to create the geoglyphs. All the geoglyphs are composed of simplistic shapes, but that doesn't take away from their beauty. Alongside those recently discovered, other geoglyphs have been found representing hummingbirds, monkeys, spiders, mythical creatures, and dogs. It's thought that the Nazca lines were made by taking out dark pebbles from the sand surface and revealing the white sand beneath it in creating these shapes. With the discovery of brand new geoglyphs, the total number of found icons is 358, but experts state that they believe several hundred are still out there to be discovered. Peruvian archaeologist Luis Jaime Castillo has openly commented that he thinks only 5% of the Nazca lines have been uncovered. It's tricky to see their full designs unless one is on high ground looking down at the marbles. The Nazca lines were initially found in 1939 when a pilot flew overhead, but it's believed the surrounding locals witnessed their beauty long before from the heights of the hilltops. The reasoning behind their existence remains undetermined. Some archaeologists argue that it was supposed to serve an observatory purpose and work somewhat like a sundial, though other researchers believe that they were simply works of art. For now, it remains a debate. Scientists discover two alien minerals in meteorite. When a meteorite crashed into the heart of Somalia, no one could have ever predicted that scientists would uncover never-before-seen minerals. The meteorite was the ninth largest ever recorded, weighing a shocking 15 tonnes. Professor of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences at the University of Alberta, Chris Hurd, has stated, whenever you find a new mineral, it means that the actual geological conditions, the chemistry of the rock, was different than what's been found before. That's what makes this exciting. In this particular meteorite, you have two officially described minerals that are new to science. A 70-gram sample was sent to be tested by the university in order to be classified. This sample revealed the two new minerals, with a third possible mineral currently being analysed. Heard claims that, should the rest of the meteorite be investigated, we may find even more unknown minerals. The two new minerals have been dubbed El Alite, after El Ali, the name given to the meteorite, and Elkin Stantonite, after Lindy Elkins Tanton, who is a professor at the University of Arizona and the principal investigator of NASA's upcoming Psyche mission, which is meant to intercept an asteroid that's in orbit between Jupiter and Mars. The asteroid possesses many metals and will hopefully bring new knowledge and understanding to our species. Professor Chris Hurd has remarked that Elkins Tanton has done a lot of work on how the cores of planets form, how these iron-nickel cores form, and the closest analogue we have are iron meteorites. So it made sense to name a mineral after her and recognise her contributions to science. The California Institute of Technology and UCLA researchers have been working together on this project in unison and revealed that the El Ali meteorite is a rare iron silicate meteorite. In the history of humanity, only 350 have ever been discovered. Andrew Lowcock assisted Chris Hurd in the research and analysis of the El Ali sample. Lowcock was the one to discover the two mysterious minerals. According to Hurd, that was phenomenal. Most of the time it takes a lot more work than that to say there's a new mineral. Currently, Hurd and his team are working tirelessly to figure out how the El Ali meteorite formed and under what conditions. 
Furthermore, he is trying to uncover what these minerals could be used for. But what are your thoughts on these discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.